Welcome to Channel Mimic, your insight to the Strand Visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube Visa consultant. Are you interested about migrating to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell on the side so once you have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one getting all the insight. Now, I've been frequently asked in regards to this question whether the work experiences is very important for general skill migration. Now, in this video, I would like to take a little bit of opportunity to go through some of the regulation, law, and skill assessment criteria, and let's just talk about and answer whether a skill employment is important and should the employment be taken in Australia or outside of Australia, how that would actually could be compared. Uh, some of the people are in, in their profession, they are very experienced, they have a lot of experiences. But why is it uh, Australian doesn't the government of Australia doesn't uh, invite them to actually migrate straight away? It's a very commonly asked questions. Well, it's actually going into the actual skill assessment requirements and also the point test table, which is uh, two very different stuff. And plus, a different state have their different requirement as well. So it's actually a very complicated. Um, topic that we are actually discussing here. Now, first of all, we have to understand the skill assessing authority, they are not government. They are generally an independent body other than the government. And their goal is actually to protect their industry. So, for instance, some of the, you may notice that some of the skill assessing authority is not actually very friendly for overseas skill migrant. Let's start with the first. Let's go through the visa first, and we will go through one by one until the end. And I'll provide a summary at the very end of this video. Okay, so let's jump into a very commonly asked uh, visa, which is just a subclass one a nine. It's the uh, independent skill migration with a point test stream where you're required to get uh, at least 65 points on your expression of interest and perhaps you'll be invited by the government of Australia to actually apply for your visa and migrate to Australia permanently. This is a permanent visa uh, which is well, the, the, uh, the most favorable because there is no condition you're not required to work anymore but as you notice it's a point test stream so there's a point attached to it let's go into the actual point table where we could actually identify uh, the differences between working experiences in Australia and overseas by overseas I mean outside of Australia so there obviously there's a lot of category that we can jump into let's go into the skill employment experiences as you can see they are separated into overseas skill employment and the Australian skill employment and straight away you will be able to identify that if you work in Australia you are more favorable for example here one year out of the three years in the previous three years you get five points now if you only work one year overseas you get nothing okay you have to actually work for three years and to get that five points so as you can see there is the unbalanced point there uh, it doesn't mean that you're not experienced uh, but it's just more favorable for people who had experiences in Australia now this is very important that is the reason why uh, the best thing is you. The, the, the reason they're doing this is they wanted to pull more people to come to Australia and study in Australia, and then they will have a graduate temporary work visa, and during that point of time, you can actually acquire and accrue your work experiences through this way, and that is the important thing. Now, I'm not too sure how someone could work in Australia for eight years and not even migrate to Australia. So the only the only top one that I've actually been made with is at least three years out of the five. I haven't really seen anyone who actually worked more than five 
and haven't even migrated to Australia. That will be a pity there. But anyway, this is the table that actually shows the, the balances between overseas work experiences and work experiences in Australia. So okay, straight away you can see. And the other one is if you're an IT profession, you will notice uh, you need to go to Australian Computer Society. So let's jump in to Australian Computer Society's guideline whether working in Australia is more favorable or working in outside of Australia is more favorable. So in this part, actually, in the guideline, uh, it doesn't spell straight, but uh, for ACS, Australian Computer Society, they actually benefit more for people who actually study in Australia. So same qualification that you get for ICT qualification in Australia compared to ICT qualification in UK or USA, the Skill Assessing Authority will favor the Australian qualification. <laughs> it's a very um, strange thing that perhaps you're coming from Harvard, perhaps you're coming from MIT, Stanford, Oxford, you name it. But anyway, Skill Assessing Authority will actually lower uh, your points on that part there. So you might go through these thing here. And also the work experiences, they actually assess it very hard. So for instance, uh, in my experiences, if you if you graduated in Australia and you continue to work in Australia, uh, all you need to do is provide your uh, work references from your boss and the pay slips. That's it. They were accepted. Now, if you have been working overseas outside of Australia, wow, they want a lot. They want your tax paper. They want everything. They even call up your previous boss to confirm whether or not you actually work in that position there. So again, uh, it's more favorable for if you have uh, a qualification or work experiences in Australia is actually more favorable for ACS as well. So you can see here a non-ICT qualification comparable uh, to the diploma. You need six year work experience to actually be assessed positive for your uh, qualification to match diploma. But if you wanted something higher, uh, you need eight years. Wow. Who will have eight years of work experiences? Well, perhaps that's very experienced person, but you probably won't still pass the skill assessment here. Now, moving onwards, let's go into trade recognition Australia. That's for a lot of trades and, uh, for example, uh, mechanics, uh, plumber, electrician, cook and chef, um, carpenters. They will actually go from here as well. And same thing, same thing here. Now, what we have gone through is a traditional way how the skill assessment authority will favor people who actually study in Australia and been gaining experiences in Australia. Now, people may argue, you know, sometimes these experiences in Australia is not as good as you can get in US or perhaps in UK. Well, that's pretty true in the fact, but this is a migration world. They have a different point of view. So again, trade recognition Australia. If we go into the migration skill assessment, which the guideline here, uh, I'm not going to open up for you uh, again. Now, if you have study in Australia, you are actually going through job ready program, which you had have done uh, heaps of uh, videos on this one. You may want to check it out and search on my channel. Now, job ready program basically says once you graduated from Australian recognized qualification, all you need to do is to acquire, I think, about 18 months of the work experiences. And that's it. That's done. You're, you're good. But if you're overseas or you're doing the general migration skill assessment, look at this. If you got a qualification award internationally, that means not in Australia, you need to get three years double of the work experience to actually match for somebody who actually studied and complete and graduated in Australia. That's not really fair. But you can also see here if you got a uh, Australian qualification issue by RPL. RPL means you have um, qualification or experiences overseas, and Australian um, institution actually recognize your qualification and provide you the same level of license or certificates. However, if you want to go through visa, you still need to get that three year full time work experiences. So again, it's as you can see the the uh, the policy and regulation actually favor for people actually staying in Australia and work in Australia. Now, I think 
we are at a point of time where major changes are coming up and which is exciting as well because we have just gone through a, pan a painful pandemic together for these two years so some of the state government have actually invented something new uh, and let's have a look uh, for example uh, if we go into the um, South Australians uh, uh, state nomination page there uh, you may notice the requirement of work experiences is actually less uh, than the skill assessing authority but you still need to go through skill assessment I'm not saying you do not need to go through skill assessment and you may notice that the upcoming changes for the 482 uh, which is the employment uh, skill employment visa for uh, skill uh, employment sponsor visa uh, you don't need to go through skill assessment anymore so I believe there's something coming up to actually balance this up because we have two years in Australia where there's no international student there is no student grad there's no graduates how do you get these people so I believe that in my summary of this video is that what we are expecting in 2022 there will be a major shakeup of the policy in regards to this for example why we have just get gone through these two years of pandemic how do you expect somebody graduated back in 2019 or 2020 and still got experiences and can pass skill assessment despite there's only limited number left in Australia so if they want to attract the offshore people probably they need to drop something there to actually let this skill migrants come into Australia what are your thought anyway should you have more question and query read more than welcome to leave a comment right down below and I see you next video goodbye